On the 8th of August, the U.S. Navy announced that USS Gerald R. Ford, nuclear-powered supercarrier, has successfully completed a third explosive test, marking the completion of the Full Ship Shock Trials FSSTs. This release comes amid rising tension in the disputed South China Sea. Shock trials are designed to validate the supercarrier's hardness and ability to sustain operations in a hostile environment. The tests are simulated using live ordnance. During the four-month testing evolution, the aircraft carrier withstood the impact of three 40,000-pound or 20 tons underwater explosions released at distances progressively closer to the warship. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the U.S. Navy is not scared of Chinese carrier killer missiles. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Nimitz-class carriers have been the face of the U.S. Navy and have enabled power projection far off from the American homeland. USS Nimitz, the lead ship of the Nimitz-class, was commissioned in 1975. Nimitz-class has been able to accommodate many new technologies over the decades, but the Nimitz design has now reached its threshold and this is where Ford-class comes in. Ford-class supercarriers are being built to replace some of the United States Navy's existing Nimitz-class carriers. The first ship of this class is Gerald R. Ford. Nuclear-powered supercarriers are extremely costly to build and operate. No country currently possesses such an asset, let alone having ten of these. Hence, rivals such as China and Russia are deploying asymmetric weapons to counter the American supercarriers. China has two missiles that are specifically designed to neutralize supercarriers, DF-21D and DF-26B. The Dongfeng-21 is a two-stage, solid-fueled, single-warhead, medium-range ballistic missile MRBM, in the Dongfeng series developed by China, Shangfang Mechanics, and Electronics Technology Academy. The DF-21D, developed from DF-21, is said to be the world's first anti-ship ballistic missile ASBM. It's thought to employ a maneuverable re-entry vehicle with a terminal guidance system. This gives it the ability to hit a moving aircraft carrier strike group from long range. Reports indicate that it has a speed of around Mach 10. According to the U.S. National Air and Space Intelligence Center, the missile has a maximum range of around 1,450 kilometers or 900 miles. It can carry a 600 kilogram or about 1,350 pounds warhead. The DF-26 has a range of 4,000 kilometers or 2,500 miles and is thought to be designed to conduct precision nuclear or conventional strikes. This missile is deemed to have an accuracy of 100 meters CEP. The missile was officially revealed at the Chinese 2015 parade commemorating the end of the Second World War. In 2018, it was officially confirmed that the DF-26 was in service with the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force. The missile has a two-stage solid-fueled propulsion system and can accommodate 1,200 kilograms or about 2,650 pounds warhead. DF-26B, 
developed from DF-26, is the anti-ship variant and can hit naval targets. Captain Brian Metcalf, manager for the U.S. Navy's Future Aircraft Carrier Program Office, said, The Navy designed the Ford-class carrier using advanced computer modeling methods, testing and analysis to ensure the ships are hardened to withstand harsh battle conditions. Metcalf further said, The test demonstrated and proved to the crew fairly dramatically that the ship will be able to withstand formidable shocks and continue to operate under extreme conditions. Former Chinese military instructor Song Zhongping stated that besides collecting data, another reason to announce the successful shock trial of Ford was to send a message to China and Russia that the U.S. aircraft carriers have super resilience and they're not worried about Chinese or Russian conventional anti-ship weapons. It's important to note the two Chinese missiles, DF-21D and DF-26B, carry warheads that are approximately 30 and 15 times smaller than what was used in the full ship shock trials. So there's no reason to believe that a supercarrier can't absorb multiple indirect hits from this. Song told the Hong Kong-based South China Morning Post, The 40,000-pound explosive blast was much bigger than any single warhead or conventional missile or torpedo. The trial proved the Ford-class aircraft carriers could withstand some water mines or nearby missile strikes, but did not show their resistance against a direct hit. While direct hit can't be simulated, it's to be noted that achieving that is not easy. Both the missiles will have to be fed with approximate location data from satellite, etc. beforehand. Terminal guidance can only do limited course correction. Nimitz and Ford-class carriers are some of the biggest warships to roam the oceans. But that doesn't mean they're slow in lumbering. Powered by their nuclear reactors, they can move at 35 miles or 56 kilometers per hour. Though these supercarriers are huge, in an open ocean, a carrier is not easy to detect or track. In 30 minutes after a sighting by an opponent, the area within which a carrier might be operating will expand to 90 square miles, and this will increase to around 4,000 square miles after 60 minutes. At its maximum range of 1,450 kilometers or 900 miles, DF-21D will take around 7 minutes to hit the target and the supercarrier could undertake defensive maneuvers, including the last-moment ones, to evade the missile. Vice Admiral Jeffrey Trussler, the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Information Warfare, some time back, said that the U.S. Navy monitors China's missile programs, including the anti-ship variant of DF-21 and DF-26, since they are specifically aimed at the U.S. Navy. He stated that China can continue spending money on anti-ship ballistic missiles, but it might not be the capability needed to win if a conflict broke out between the U.S. and China, indicating that the U.S. is confident regarding the capabilities of its key naval assets to withstand an anti-missile onslaught. Viewers may note that the U.S. also has options like preemptive strikes against launch pads, mid-air interception, as well as electronic countermeasures to disrupt an attack. It's clear from our analysis that there's merit to this, and Chinese DF-21D and DF-26B are not silver bullets.